Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode on the Everyday Joy podcast. I want to do a massive shout out to anyone and everyone who has sent through an email through to the Everyday Joy inbox. It is such a delight to hear individuals reach out and share their stories, share how God has been using this podcast to bring about joy and meaning, and maybe even a little bit of a challenge as well. Now, if you want to send through a personal email, this comes straight through to the Everyday Joy podcast team. The inbox is in the description below. And if you've got some suggestions and some feedback as well, that's the place to do it. So if you want to find the link, the email address is below in the description. Or if you've got a good memory, it's everydayjoy at positivemedia.com.au. Right now, though, let's get into today's episode. Don't copy the behaviour and customs of this world, but be a new and different person with a fresh newness in all you do and think. Then you will learn from your own experience how his ways will really satisfy you. Romans 12, verse 2, TLB. I've got Jackie here in studio with me. Hello, Jack. Hi, Joy. How are you today? A bit hay fevery. I'll be honest, I sound a little bit... um... I'm about to cry, Um, but it's (laughs) It's because my my eyes are actually watering right now, I feel like. I can say it. (laughs) I'm not sick, I swear. Um, It feels like there's a feather up my nose, Oh, and it's just gone going nuts in there. So, I have been blessed with not being very susceptible to hay fever. Like, rarely do I feel anything that is hay fever. It's bad in Melbourne, because I never Mm. had this in New Zealand, but everyone's told me it is like the worst pet. The worst place for someone who has hay fever to be in, especially over the springtime. Yes, time. apparently yeah. it's like hay fever sufferers, you know, nightmare yeah. situation. Something about a dust bowl and certain winds and pollens. and You're just like, I yeah. don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Doesn't don't affect know. me. Yeah. <laughs> just hashtag blessed. Yes. Um. yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Love it. Hey, today we're talking about Romans 12 to I love it because last week George actually talked about um, the book of Romans. Yep. And he mentioned last week something incredible. George said that this book in the Bible is basically like the Himalayas of the New Testament. <laughs> <laughs> I think I quoted that right. But it's this idea that it, it's really like everything comes together. It's the theological Himalaya of the um, New Testament. It talks about what Jesus did, who he came for, what it all means. It's a heavy read. It's a beautiful read. It is, yeah. Um, and it's just such a beautiful chapter we're looking at today, Romans 12 too. Now, today we're talking about Sabbath a little bit, and I think it ties in so well with my first impression yes. of this verse because it starts off saying, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world. And my first impression is, how good does God know us? <laughs> <laughs> That is literally our default to yeah. find the comfort in copying the behavior and the customs of this world. That's my first impression. What yep. about you, Jack? Yeah. I mean, if you've ever, you know, if you've been in church for more than two minutes or ever been in a, you know, sort of modern day church service, you've probably heard something along the lines of, you know, don't be like the world, be in the world, but not of the world, um, you know, or paraphrasing different passages from the Bible. Um, but, you know, one of... But what does that mean? What is the world? What is the, you know, what are the the behaviours and customs of the world that, you know, and in terms of Sabbath, that's perfect because, you know, the world is go. The world is achieve. The world is don't stop. The world is, you know, let's catch up. Let's do this. Let's do it. You've got to keep going, you know. You've got the hustle and you've got the, well, if I work all during the week, then I've got to catch up with every single person I know and love on the weekend. And Mm -hmm. I da 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 and I'm just. Yeah. And that's a behavior that we find, we can find it so easy to succumb to and find ourselves doing, you know, without any conscious thought of, oh my gosh. Um, and I don't know about you, but for me, um, actually being in lockdown was, a, was like an amazing reset and an amazing opportunity to go, hang on, what's the rhythm that suits me? What's the rhythm that I want to live my life? like and you know reading the bible reading about different people's opinions and and why they do a sabbath and thinking oh i like the sound of this i like the sound of a day where i dedicate myself to rest we're resting in him talking to god knowing more about him 
but not worrying myself with the everyday or the, you know, the bills or the work or the this and the that and mm. who I'm catching up with and who I'm not. But having a day or, or a period of time where I set myself apart and I listen and I talk to God. Yeah. Yeah. And I think a really good example of that is, you know, when you go to the gym, yeah. they recommend you have a couple of rest days yeah. in between the workouts. Now, I think we're very, we, we can make sense of that. We're like, oh yeah, that makes sense because that's your recovery time so that when you go back into the gym, you're not coming from a place of weakness, you're coming from a place of strength and you yep. can actually achieve more in the long run um, than by pushing it out every single day, like tearing your muscles, not giving them time to regrow while you sleep, yep. all those sorts of things. And it's the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Although I struggle as well with making that connection in my life. So I say to myself, if I like, take a day of rest I'm going to be so stressed out for all the other six days I'm not going to fit it all in blah 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 but here's the thing the Sabbath is created so that we as humans can head into the week or head into that day after our rest rejuvenated yes and I think it really matters how you spend your Sabbath as well because for you listening maybe the idea of sitting on a couch reading a book the whole day is like torture yep and it doesn't have to be that, does it? No. Some people are active Sabbath people. Yes. Like the best, your Sabbath is, I've actually got a, I'm hijacking the story here. Um, <laughs> but I had a, I heard a pastor once speak on the subject of Sabbath. And so he said when he was studying in Bible college, um, his Sabbath was going out and meeting people because day in, day out, he was reading, studying, doing all those sorts of things. And now that he's a pastor, he's like, people are 90% of what I do. And so now my Sabbath looks like reading a book and going into Mm. a quiet place. So the way you unwind, the way you relax, it looks different in every season. And I think a really good measure is to ask yourself, what's the opposite of work? Yes. (laughs) And maybe figuring out what what, um, aligns there. So Jackie, how do you go about Sabbath in your own life? Um. Yeah, so I I generally tend to spend Saturdays very quietly Mm. Um, and that is being very deliberate about catching up with maybe one friend and doing a brunch or something and then it may or may not involve an afternoon nana nap. Mm. Um, (laughs) Amen to that. (laughs) Love my nana nap. Love a nana nap. Um, It will definitely involve a book. Mm -hmm. Um, It could involve a walk. You know, depending on what the day looks like, I don't want to maniacally exercise, but if it's a beautiful day, I do want to get out in nature because, you know, even if it's just, uh, you know, where I live, there are a couple of, um, you know, walking tracks nearby where you're in the bush in the suburbs and that can be really a good way to connect with God. But as much as I can, I do also deliberately try to, you know, converse with God Mm. during that day. And, and quiet my mind deliberately. Yeah, yeah, that's the key, I think. Yeah. The quietening of the mind, yeah. which is the opposite of the behavior and custom of this world, going back to Romans Absolutely. 12 too. Absolutely, yep. Um, I just think it's so important that when we go about, because you might be, if you're a list person like myself, <laughs> you're probably thinking to yourself, great, Sabbath. Okay, Saturday. Let me start making, before, hold your horse. Yeah, right. Slow your roll. Slow. <laughs> Because here's the thing, do not plan a Sabbath without God. Yes. (laughs) The point of Sabbath is to spend time with God. Yeah. Is to spend time being rejuvenated by him in in his presence. So my encouragement to you is before you go off and, and plan your Sabbath, just stop for a little bit, pray about it. I mean, this episode will go out on a Wednesday. So spend the next few days asking God, Lord, how would you have me spend Sabbath? Um, how would you have me uh, connect with you in this time? And you might be prompted to go volunteer somewhere. Yeah. You might be prompted to stay at home or you know do some gardening or to do some exercise. I don't know what that looks like for you, but I think we, we can't um, approach Sabbath with the same mindset that we approach other things in life, no. which is what can I get out of it? Yes. Yeah. Although, ironically, you will get something out of it. You will get something out. That's the thing. But if you go into it wanting to get something out of it, you kind of miss out on it. Yeah. And and I mean, if you're really interested, if you're a, you know, a a curious knowledge gathering sort of person, go and read on the history of Sabbath. 
Um, it is absolutely beautiful. Mm. But the beauty of it also is that we can take what, you know, Jewish culture or Jewish custom is and and make it ours in a way for, you know, our Christianity today. Mm. And it is just the the history, the depth behind it is so moving and so wonderful. Mm. And to take some of that into our world today is definitely leaving those customs and behaviours behind. As we head to the end of today's episode, I know there's so many things to consider, so many things to just ponder. But I would like to encourage you, if you haven't already, to leave a written five-star review. Now, this really helps because it helps other people discover the podcast. But when you write up a review and you use your own words to describe this podcast, when someone searches words like podcast, joy, community, it'll pull up your words. So the more people who write and the more words they use and the different experiences they have when listening to this podcast, all of that comes together and ultimately allows people from all over the world to discover this podcast. And let me tell you, we have a global audience. Although I'm sitting here in a studio here in Melbourne, I'm fully aware of how God is using this podcast to reach into nations and spaces where it's hard to get a Bible where it's hard to find a church, where the name of God has to be whispered because that's the environment they're in. I really believe that this podcast has got the ability to bring joy and hope to so many and your review can be a little way to say thank you to God for bringing this podcast into your life and a little way for you to show that joy and light to others who might not otherwise discover a God who loves them. So just really want to encourage you with that if you haven't already. Now, if you have, thank you, thank you, thank you. It's one of the reasons why this podcast has grown so much. We've got a long way to go. I'm so excited for what God is going to do next. Catch up next time.